Բարև ծես իրեր հեսուետող պարեկամներ, անգամի եվ ասկող չունեմ ծես AMG էհրուստան գերութիան հիմնակար հաղորդաշարով։ Մեր այսօրվա հաղորդաշարը լինելու է անգլերենով, որով էդ էվ անգեղթպիտի ասեմ մանցյալ շրապատ մենք ունեցանք հայերեն Եվրոպայի տարպեր, տարպեր կաղտոճախներում մեջ, շատ կեղեցիկ և հուսատրիչ մեզի կրություններ հասավ և խնդրեցին, որ այս ծրակիրը նաև անգլերենով ներգայացնենք։ Ուրեմն ձեր նորաղմությունը կխնդրեմ սիրել է Հուստայտոպարեկամներ։ Dear viewers, you're watching AMGA uh, channel, uh, Himna Kar Show, which is aired every Monday at 10.30 Pacific time. And we are on the air more than a quarter of century. And we're giving our best to present the truth the, uh, to the, our Armenian community or at large. So before I start with today's program, I would like to congratulate and our brothers and sisters who are celebrating uh, the Lunar uh, New Year. And on Sunday, actually, it was the first day of the year and it, was the, it is the year of Rabbit. So on this Lunar New Year, when communities and families were gathered to celebrate New Year and a fresh start, they were greeted instead with uh, violence and tragedies in our own neighbor, neighboring city, which is Monterey Park and Alhambra. When any community is victim to acts of the violence and lose of life, it rocks all of us. I would like to offer my deepest condolences and also the condolences of AMJ uh, channel to the whole victims and their families. Uh, I had recently, actually, I had the opportunity to attend uh, events sponsored by Vietnamese and Chinese employees both held in Monterey Park to celebrate the Lunar New Year. While there, I was touched by the, the passion and love on full display for their respective cultures, tradition, and one another. When this kind of uh, tragic happened, it's always difficult to know exactly what to say. Of course, our thoughts and prayers are with the individuals and families impacted this senseless act of violence. My hope is that we can unite as a community to support one another during this difficult time. While it may be a struggle to find the right words or appropriate action, I believe we are connected to one another and this interconnection is what will sustain us and help us heal. Therefore, strength, love, and peace be with us all. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. So, uh, today's program that I decided also to present in English because all started in Italy, in Milan. So Inter Milan midfielder Henrik uh, Mkhitaryan, who formerly captained the Ar Armenian national football team, has in a fresh interview with the club spoken about his homeland. So they asked him 
where he comes from. So then Mkhitaryan drew a map of Armenia and included Artsakh, which is also known as nagorno karabakh and showed the capital Yerevan with a dot. Yerevan is a wonderful city, he said, especially in summertime when it's hot. There are many people on the street having a good time. I was, I'm planning to return to Yerevan when I don't play football anymore. But now I am here in Milan, said Mkhitaryan. So when we start with his picture and imagine it was a very basic and he was drawing the Armenian map and next to it, it was the Artsakh, which is traditionally known as a, a part of the Armenian. Here you can see that he drew with hand where the today's Armenian border and he included also Artsakh. So this simple but uh, politically not correct, so to say. So the whole Azerbaijan, starting with their uh, dictator Aliyev, the president, all the way down, they were so mad that Mr. Mkhitaryan, he drew the Armenian map, including nagorno karabakh which historically is Armenia. So I'm sure many of you know what is Armenia, where is Armenia, but let me just put this program together. Armenia is found in the world's oldest map and history books, sometimes as independent state and sometimes divided between, the whole land is divided between neighboring empires, but nevertheless, the name of Hayastan, Hayas, or Armenia, or Ararat, or Urardu, has always been mentioned since ancient Greek and Roman maps to this date. So today I will show you some of the ancient maps to give you an idea of a uh, position that Armenian occupying and the ancient maps of the world. Let's follow together. For those interested in more detail, I recommend reading Ruben Galician's work, Armenia in World. Uh, it's a cartography and it was printed in 2005 or a brief version of that book. It's called Historic Maps of Armenia, which is, was printed in 2018. So let's go one by one, starting from the oldest and come to the newest. Let me introduce to you Babylonian clay table, which is from the 6th century BC. This is the oldest extent map of the world, is despite on a clay table. It is Babylonian map found in Iraq in the 19th century. Now it is stored in the British Museum. This Babylonian map of the world dates back all the way to the 6th century BC. In ancient Assyrian and Babylonian sources, the kingdom of Ararat is referred to as Urartu. This name is mentioned on the world's oldest map. Of the countries mentioned in this map, only Armenia still, still exists. All other ones have disappeared from the world map. According to the cartographer Ruben Galician, the map shows the world in the form of a circle surrounded by bitter waters in which there are seven islands. In the center of map is Babylon. Next to it, it's Armenia and Assyria and uh, depict another seven cities are in a small circle. From the mountain of Armenia, the Euphrates River flows through Babylon to Maresh 
and reaches to Persian Gulf. On the back of tile, there is a text that describes seven islands in the sea, an unusual creature living there. The islands are depicted from the, from the triangle, most of which are demand and they are illegible writings. And today, this clay map, you can find it in British Museum in London, United Kingdom. The second map. Let's go to the second map, please. And this is also, it called the Herodotus map. It comes from the 5th century BC. The world according to the Herodotus, edited by the Charles Miller, published in the Smith's Atlas, Armenia has a central position among the countries that existed at that time but today they are not, they are not, uh, they don't exist anymore. So this atlas is Smith's Atlas. It is still belongs to the British Museum, London. It was printed the last time in 1874. The third atlas, it's Eratosan's Atlas, which is from the third to the second century BC reconstructed map of Erotesenes, Erotesenes by German uh, cartographer von Sprünner, and it is um, printed uh, 1855. Also Ruben Galician's personal uh, collection that he dedicated to Madenataran today, you can find this in Yerevan. The fourth map, Let's go to the more, okay, this is also uh, geographical systems, it says. And Strabo, it is the first from the first century BC. Based on Strabo's work, the British cartographer John Murray reconstructed the world map, one of the chapters of which, the whole chapter itself, it's dedicated to the geography of Armenia, and it is edited by the Charles Miller. Fifth, Claudius Ptolemy, which is in the second century AD. Famous Greek geographer and cosmologist Claudius Ptolemy was the most prominent cartographer in the ancient world. His most important work is the eight-volume geography. The text about Armenia is in the work, the fifth volume. This is a map of the world surrounded by winds and divided into climate zones. Besides the Red Sea, which you can see in the middle, it is painted in red. All other seas are blue and the mountains are green. The greater Armenia and the lesser Armenia, or the small Armenia, are located between the Black Sea and the Caspian Seas. The map was designed by Martin Waldsmüller and issued by the Scot in 1513. Today you can find this original in British Museum, London, United Kingdom. The sixth, it's also Claudius Ptolemy, the second century. The center of the map in white is the greater Armenia. You can see that here, Armenia Mayor, which borders with Media in the east, with Assyria in the south, Lesser Armenia in the west, Armenia Minor, and Colchis with Abkhazia, which is Iberia Verk, Albania in the north, and uh, Nicholas Geramus, who designed this in 1482. Now you can find this uh, map, the actual map, the original map, in British Museum in London, United Kingdom. Seven, 
countries occupied by Alexander the Great. Let's see that where this is where he came from Macedonia to the Asia Minor and went to south and southeast all the way through Persia, you see that there, to India. So those are the countries that occupied by Alexander the Great. This map is one of the pages of the atlas published in the Latin in Amsterdam. It represents Alexander the Great invasion of India. The map shows the greater Armenia. This is printed in 1595 and now the original is in British Library in London, United Kingdom. Well, map eight. Let me just put that, okay. Map eight. This is the Holy Land or the Earthly Paradise. The map covers the area between the Mediterranean Sea and the Persian Gulf and the prominent Eden located near the city of Babel or Babylonia. The beautiful decorated title is surrounded by pictures of scenes of Eden on both sides. You can see on the top. So the map was drawn by the Vishker as a part of the five part series of maps to be included in the Abraham van den Broek's Bible which it was written in 1657. This is the first edition of this important series of maps that formed the basis of many other Bible maps that appeared in the 18th century. Nicholas Fischer was the one who put this together in 1657. Let's go to the map 9. This is the map of terrestrial paradise. Terrestrial paradise, this map was drawn by English cartographer. Uh, I think we, uh, can we go back one? Because this is the last one. Okay, so the, this is the map again where it's biblical facts that Eden is shown here, territory of Armenia, between the lakes of Van and Kaputan, the map lists four rivers flown from the Bible paradise, which is Aras, Gihon, which is also today we call it uh, Arax, Aras, Yeras, Pison, Euphrates and Decris or Tigris. At the center of the map is Mount Ararat. So it was also created by Emmanuel Bowen in 1780. Now it is in Madenataran, Yerevan, Armenia. So let's go to the last map which is the map of Armenia, according to the old and new geographers. This map of Armenia was published in Venice in the 18th century. Why I am underlining 18th century? Because here you can very clearly see that there is no mention of Azerbaijan or Tataristan or anything else, but this is only it mentions Armenia mayor or major or big Armenia and uh, small Armenia. So small Armenia or uh, Armenia mayor was the western part of the uh, Asia Minor today, which we call it Western Turkey. Western Turkey was and is and always going to be 
Armenia. So on the 18th century, many cartographers and geographers consider this map to be the replacement for the missing map of Shiragatsi geography. So this map, the very last map, was printed in 1751 and it was printed in Venice by the Mexitarist fathers in San Lazaro, which I am proud to say that I am a Mexitarist student living in Vienna, studying in Vienna by the Mexitarist fathers of Vienna. So this uh, collection is, belongs to the Ruben Galician's personal collection, which I would like to take the opportunity to thank Mr. Ruben Galician for providing all these wonderful, wonderful maps and also uh, about this uh, information that we gathered. It is given to us by Dikran Farag, which he put a very nice article about the maps. In the conclusion, dear viewers, I would really like to thank AMGA TV channel who gave me Matter of fact, this year, it's going to be our 15th anniversary for Himnakar. We started this in 2008, and we went back every single week. We had to educate our community in Southern California, which is the one of the largest Armenian community in the world outside the United, uh, outside Armenia, and also the diaspora at large, starting from Australia all the way to the South America, from Europe to South Africa. And believe it or not, yes, people are interested to know about our history. And our history, when we go back for 6,000 years, it was always, we were up and down, up and down. We seen the Seljuk invasion in the 10th, 11th century. Can you imagine that our kingdom of Bagraduni, which ended 1045, and it continued in Cilicia, which is it was part of the, the empire. So we had the Armenian kingdom of Cilicia until 1375, April 23. And after that, we had small principalities, small kingdom in the today's Armenia. And believe it or not, this is going to be another uh, program and it's going to be in English too so people would understand where today when you see a group of Armenians on the street and yelling and chanting Artsakh, Artsakh and we have here in Glendale a street called Artsakh this part of the land, it's part of Armenia. Can you imagine the kingdom of Artsakh, which it started in thousand, and it went all the way to the 1261, where the Artsakh kingdom, the king uh, Jalalian was assassinated and his kingdom went to kingdom of Sunik and killed kingdom of Sunik was all the way until into the 19th century where the it was that land part of that land Armenia 
was part of the Russian Empire. So in, starting in the 19th century, Armenia was divided to the Russian Empire, Persian Empire, and Ottoman Empire. So empires came, empires went, but the Armenians stayed in their land and we had our history written with our own blood on our land. Today, yes, two years ago, Mr. Erdogan, with his help with his uncle and Aliyev and all the insurgents, Syrian terrorist insurgents and Pakistani insurgents, Yemeni insurgents, came together, all these people against Armenians. Yes, we lost the war and we gave more than 5,000 our best soldiers, our children. But believe it or not, it's not the end yet, Mr. Aliyev. This is not the end of Mr. Erdogan. We will rise. We will rise again like the Phoenix from our ashes. And we're going to show you and the entire world that Armenians were, Armenians are, and Armenians going to be forever. Thank you very much for your support. Have a wonderful day. God bless you and God bless the United States of America. Thank you.